Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Review. Tonight, I'm taking a look at this life-size TIE Fighter. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo, and... Whew! Star Wars Celebration kicked my ass. It was one hell of a show. It wasn't what I was expecting at all. I've been to a lot of conventions, but being at one that is completely just pinpoint focused on one subject is something new for me. It was freaking amazing, but man, was it just, it just punched you. Star, here's some Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. Just by the end of Sunday night, I was, Sadly to say, Star Wars out completely. It's just, I couldn't take any more. Until the next day, and then we listened to Aftermath on audiobook on the way home. With it being the 40th anniversary of Star Wars, it being the 20th anniversary of the 501st, it was a once in a lifetime opportunity to just go and geek out with a bunch of other Star Wars fans. Last I saw was 70,000. Now I know I usually just talk about toys and then ramble on about other shit, but today, I'm going to do a recap of the whole Star Wars celebration and the toy reveals scattered throughout. So even though I don't take notes, even though I sit down and think, I should probably write this down because I'm going to have to remember all this stuff when I get back to Arkansas. But I didn't. I never do. I never write down notes. I'm not a notes kind of guy. So this is either going to be really super long or this is going to be a complete disaster. It's going to go... Either way, I have a feeling it's going to be really long. Also, as you can tell, I did a lot and lot and lot of talking over the past week. My voice is kind of burned out, so yeah, you get to listen to that raspy stuff too. But let's start with the 16-hour drive from Arkansas to Orlando. Not very eventful. I went with a buddy of mine. He has a booth. He sells a bunch of old Star Wars stuff, vintage uh, 90s, 2000s Hasbro, stuff like that. So I went with him, it was an opportunity to go, it was an opportunity to help him out, so win-win. And then we get to the convention center, and this is the part a lot of people take for granted, and I know I did for years. And as a con goer, you walk into the convention, you go through the company booths, you go through the vendor booths, and you think, hey, this is here. You don't think about, somebody had to build these structures, somebody had to stock all of this, somebody had to roll all of this across a convention floor, Somebody had to just lug a bunch of crap. And that's what it is. Two days of building a teeny tiny town. 10, 12 hour days, uh, you're sweating, you're lifting, it's, it's work. Before I thought, you know, it just psh, appeared. Oh, and that's not how it is whatsoever. So we get to the first day of the con and we realize people have been sleeping outside overnight since the day before to get into the first panel. Now luckily enough our booth was right beside the second stage, the Star Wars show stage. It had the Millennium Falcon on one end, it had Jabba on the other end, huge life-size TIE Fighter, uh, Rancor, a bunch of cool stuff. And if you looked out of our booth it was all right there. So that was pretty amazing because when the panels were going on they were live streaming them to the screen above this stage which meant Everyone in the convention center was just mouth agape staring at this screen. And at first it was a little bit distracting because we were there to sell stuff. We were there to, you know, be a vendor. And everyone just all around the booth was just staring up at the screen. And then we realized this is not going to happen again. What the hell are we doing? not looking at that screen that everybody else is. And this is probably the most surreal moment that happened during the convention. Just people staring, all laughing together, all shedding a tear together, just all transfixed on one screen if you weren't in the actual room with the panel going on. Just everybody sharing that moment. It was a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I, I know that sounds weird talking about a Star Wars convention, but it really was. Just everyone there was a fan of this one thing. I know it's a huge thing, but just everybody getting together, celebrating together, uh, yeah, you couldn't ask for a better moment. But as far as toys go, the first day they had already shown promo pictures of Rey with her speeder, 
and then Luke with his land speeder. And those were cool reveals. They ended up in the Hasbro booth. I made my way down there, took some pictures. It was cool to see in person. I didn't much care for Ray's speeder, but seeing it in person, uh, yeah, it made me need it. And also, both of those being revealed at the same time, I realized just how similar the two are with their desert gear clothing and really the same color for both speeders. It's it's kind of, it's something you don't think about until it's right there in your face, at least for me, because most things have to be pointed out to me. We're on day two and it was the last Jedi panel. so. It was even more huge. The the feeling, the crowd, everything, it just fell into place. It was just, I climbed up a ladder to look over the wall of the booth so I could see the trailer, everything up with everyone else. I was looking over everybody, it was awesome. And then everybody just whoosh, snapped out of it as soon as the panel ended, went back to a regular convention. But then on day two, Hasbro revealed Commander Gree. I've always loved this character. There's no character to it, really. I mean, it's just a clone commander, but I love the camouflage colors. I love the greens. I love just how the setup of the uniform is. How it isn't like the rest of the commanders. I missed it initially. I took pictures of it the next day. In fact, I got home, home. <laughs> that's, that's what I call the hotel now, I guess. I got back to the hotel and then I found out about Gree. I, I missed the release altogether because it was a busy, busy day. And at the end of that day, Hasbro reveals Grand Admiral Thrawn, which is cool and not cool because I feel like sometimes whenever I have a custom idea, Hasbro's right there to go, hey, psh, stop it, we're going to make that one. And that's what happened here. I had picked up a Krennic to make a Grand Admiral Thrawn, you know, when I found some time hearing about years. But if Hasbro's making it, I'm cool with that. I can find something else to do with an extra critic, which we'll get to here in a minute. Even though I'm not a huge Thrawn fan, I'm a huge Rebels fan. And him showing up there, becoming that big bad for the season, yeah, I'm glad to see a figure of him. And then we get to day three. Thrawn's still in the case. It's the day of the Hasbro panel. I, I wait. I see reveal's gonna be at 6.30, so... Who's the guy that thinks the panel starts at 6.30? Right here, this dumbass. It wasn't until 6 o'clock that I realized the show ends at 7. Why are they having a panel at 6.30? So I go running and then they tell me the panel started at 5.30. It's on some third floor. I had no clue where it was. By the time I got there, the panel would have been over. I figure stay in the booth. Hopefully they'll put some figures up, which didn't happen until uh, about closed time. So I missed the panel because of my own stupidity. But revealed there was the fan choice Jaina Solo, which is very cool looking. I've got nothing against this figure. Is it canon anymore? No, but I dig on good action figures and she looks great. A female pilot body, you can have custom bases for other female pilots if you want. Or keep it as Jaina because from what I hear, they kind of morphed Harrison Ford's face with Carrie Fisher's and came up with this. It looks great. You can't deny that. You may hate the character, you may hate the figure because it's taking a spot from a canon character, but you can't deny that the figure looks cool. Also revealed was the San Diego version of Grand Admiral Thrawn with his trophy collection. You get another Commander Gree head, which is a little bit weird. I'm not sure why they put that in there. Is it going to have different paint apps because what I also heard was Hasbro wanted Commander Gree's helmet on the regular release to be white instead of silver. So will the Thrawn release be a little silvery to make up for that? Or what is going on there? It comes with a lightsaber, it comes with the Holy Grail from Indiana Jones, cool. It comes with Hera's family thingy, bobber, whatever, I can't remember the name of it right offhand. Comes with the Jedi Temple guard mask. From what I hear, that's supposed to fit on Kanan. But because I missed the panel, I'm only hearing secondhand that there's the San Diego version and then there's the regular version. I can't confirm that, but that would be cool to do. That's the way to do convention exclusives. Have a regular release of the same figure, just have extra accessories. And that's really what we saw at last Comic Con. That's the way to go. Nobody misses out on a character, you're only missing out on accessories. Get around to the Inferno Squadron TIE Pilot from Battlefront 2. You know which one I'm holding off on. I'm saving him for last because, ooh, he's cool. 
this is just a redeco of the original TIE Fighter pilot. It's got uh, the Inferno Squadron markings on it. Yeah, I'm good with this. And then finally, the character that after the Grand Admiral Thrawn reveal, I thought, I'll make this other guy there. I'll finish up the head I already have started. Uh, it's half painted already. I'll just finish him up with the Krennic body, be happy, be good, move on. So, Hasbro, looking over my shoulder again and going, uh, uh bitch, reveals Grand Moff Tarkin. I am completely good with this. I don't care that they're ruining my custom ideas. It's actually less work for me. And less work for me is a winner in my book. He looks great, he looks sinister, he looks evil, he comes with the interrogator droid. We can, we can torture Leia now in her cell. I, yeah, that's weird. I don't know where I was going with that. The Peter Cushing likeness here is great. Of course, it's a prototype, so uh, who knows what it'll look like once it's released, but we know the sculpt's there because with the Black Series, the sculpt is always there. My only wish is that he also came with slippers to wear instead of boots, but that is really really pushing the envelope there. But mentioning that's a prototype, I did hear that the Thrawn in the case is an actual production figure. So, pretty cool. It's probably the San Diego version. And rumor on the street, the mean streets of celebration, is that Thrawn will get his regular release on Force Friday. Which is cool. I'll end up with this regular release too, uh, to make uh, Yularen maybe, or some other big wig Imperial that it will never happen. It'll just sit in my fodder box forever. Now that was Saturday. Uh, Saturday we were rushing to get something to eat to make it to the 501st party. We had gotten tickets for that. It sounded cool. Uh, go hang out with some 501st. My friends drink a little bit. We ended up back at the hotel, get up, go to day four, be done with the celebration. We get to the 501st party and this is happening. Never in my life did I ever think that I would see Twi'leks doing acrobats in a hoop hanging from the ceiling. Now this was also happening on stage. Uh, there was all kinds of crazy stuff in the crowd. Uh, Ponda Baba's arm floating around like a beach ball the whole show uh, while DJ music was just... <laughs> more crazy than I thought it was going to be. It was way more insane. It was a Star Wars rave, essentially, is what it was. But I didn't think it would be that crazy, so when I left the show, my phone was at 5%, so I didn't get much video, which sucks even more because about 30 minutes into standing around, watching people drink, dance, jump, hop, acrobats, uh, the Tonika sisters on the stage, that somebody walks by wondering when Weird Al's going on. Weird Al, I'm sure it was mentioned to me at some point that Weird Al was going to be performing at this party. It just somehow slipped my mind. Maybe it was a long time ago that they told me. But when I heard that, it was like, wait, Weird Al, what's... Uh, 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 uh. If Celebration was a check mark off my list of things to do before I expire, Weird Al would be above that because... Yeah, that's my childhood right there. Listening to a lot of Weird Al, he was the Transformer soundtrack, UHF, finish up cartoons, the Weird Al show. Just Weird Al was a huge part of my childhood. So hearing that, I thought, my phone is dead. But I did get this. almost felt like Weird Al was trolling the 501st. He had announced that this was his one and only show of the year. They were taking a year off, and I don't know how the 501st got them to perform at this show, but they only played obscure songs, which most I did know. And they played Albuquerque, which is probably my favorite Weird Al song ever. But it was just some of the comments he made, like, 
he was contractually obligated to play for 45 seconds or 45 seconds that's short ass show 45 minutes 50 minutes somewhere in there and just that he was there he was gonna be gone afterwards there was gonna be no encore just there play go so I don't know if something was going on there but to me as a huge Weird Al fan, I think it's been a long, long time since I've smiled ear to ear for 45 to 50 minutes. It was an amazing experience that I would have not been able to do if I hadn't gone to the celebration. Now, day four. Day four, the Sunday that's usually the wind down day, it was still busy as hell the whole day. So I never made it to the Hasbro booth to get my convention exclusive vintage carded X-Wing Luke. Thankfully enough, we were set up across the aisle from Dorkside Toys. I got to meet and talk to Eddie throughout the show here and there. Just a super down-to-earth kind of guy. But thanks to him, I did get mine, and it's very, very cool. But on Sunday, Hasbro also revealed the box for the San Diego exclusive version of Luke and his Land Speeder. Now, I'm not sure what exactly is going on there. I think there is a regular release of the Land Speeder. And there's also the San Diego version, which apparently has moving engine parts. Uh, it's a little bit more grungier body. And I've also heard that the poncho is exclusive to San Diego, but I cannot confirm that. I, I'm not sure on that. But it was so busy that day that I never made it down to take pictures of that. Just, yeah, that's the way the show ended up. But the things I did see from the booth, amazing. It was crazy. Now going back to convention setup and teardown. Most shows, they give you a day to set up. And then on the last day, the convention closes, and then you have four to five hours to get the hell out of the convention center. Bigger shows like this, they give you two days to set up because you have Hasbro, you have Sideshow, you have uh, Tamashi Nations, or well, Bluefin, really. Uh, you have all these big companies moving stuff in with forklifts and everything else that they give you two days to set up, and there's also an extra day to tear down. But most shows, you set up for 10, 11 hours, then you tear down in four. And every show I've ever worked like this, they turn off the AC slash heat as soon as the, the convention goers start filing out. They turn off half the lights because they want to save power there. It's just like, oh, show's over, we're done with shit, y'all do whatever, get the hell out. And then 16 hours drive back. So there you go, uh, the Star Wars celebration from my point of view. Just an amazing, tiring, exhausting, fantastic thing that happened in my life that I'm now trying to remember everything that actually happened. But the best thing that happened was y'all. <laughs> That's what I'll say. And y'all know who you are. Every one of you that walked up to me said you enjoyed the show, just wanted to meet me. I enjoyed meeting you. It was an experience. It stands out in my head. Just the whole experience. Nobody said dickhead. I was surprised. Is some of y'all? Mmm, yeah. But still, it was just cool to meet all of you that I did. And I hope next time I meet more of you. I'll uh, be in San Diego. I'll be at the Denver Comic Con. Uh, yeah, there's going to be a few Comic Cons I'm going to be at in the next few months. And I hope to meet everyone that, you know, cares to meet me. <laughs> that's, that's the big thing right there. You care to meet me? No problem standing there talking to you about toys. Now, I know there's a bunch of other news that happened too. We got we got Mafex, we got Rebel Tech, we got Figure Arts, we got all kinds of other news to go over. Probably gonna end up with a super long show there, but I'm gonna wait till the weekend on that. I'm gonna try to get a review done tomorrow. Get caught up on those because I have the Mafex Harley. I have, <laughs> thanks to Eddie at Dorkside Toys, I have the Mafex C-3PO with Red Arm and BB-8. Yeah, I caved. <laughs> so expect some more reviews expect some more rambling about other news that happened in the past week uh, in in con time it feels like i've been gone for a month but i'm back so if you like this very one subject foosh weekly comment like subscribe and i'll catch you on foosh